in verse 30, John, the writer of the gospel, agrees. And he says, And truly, Jesus, Jesus did many signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But those are written, but these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Very interesting. If Thomas, if John had believed that Thomas was talking about and admitting that Jesus Christ was God, had John believed that Thomas was admitting that Jesus Christ was God, then verse 31 would have read like this. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is God, the Son of God, and believing that you may have life in his name. But he states the opposite. He states what Thomas meant. That Thomas now believes that he is the Messiah. And now the Apostle John, whoever wrote this, is in agreement when he says that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. Now when it says the Son of God, word Son of God also in, in Jewish vernacular meant Messiah. They believed that the Messiah would be called Son of God. Not that he's the actual Son of God, but that was another term and vernacular used to describe the Messiah. Nothing unusual at all. Uh, when he said that you may have life in his name, meaning that the prophets, any prophet, life is believing in the teachings of the prophets, following the teachings of the prophets, thereby following the law and commandments of God which would get you the kingdom of God and get you God's forgiveness and get you what we call in Islam Jannah or heaven by following the teachings of the prophets of God for to follow the teachings of the prophets of God is to accept God to disobey and to reject the prophets of God is to reject and disobey God so this statement is in communion with all the other prophets of God um, may God bless you and keep you safe hopefully I could not go into everything because time does not permit but there's even more much more and hopefully in another tape at another time we will go into other aspects of Jesus Christ being fit as a crucifixion that he was perfect we can uh, go into that into detail also does he follow the rabbinic law or the law of the Jews as far as to what requires a crucifixion and what is uh, asked of the crucifixion and the laws of crucifixion does Jesus meet those requirements also did Jesus lie was he perfect did he lie or did he not lie did he make sin or not sin these will be done at a future date assalamu alaikum wa